So you just got your new DJI Mavic 2 Pro. You're super excited. You pull it out of the box. You head out to go get some amazing footage because you're an amazing drone pilot, right? <laughs> you kick it up to 4K. You switch over to the new D-Log-M 10-bit color profile because you want the highest quality. Then you get back home. You pop your SD card into your PC and you get this. stuttering playback or video doesn't play at all. Problem is, in order to film in D-Log-M, you have to switch from H.264 to H.265. And unless you have a really robust PC, it's really gonna struggle just trying to play that video. So you know it'll be even worse when you try to edit the video. Now my laptop is a few years old now, but it still has really good specs doesn't matter. The H.265 Kodak requires a lot of processing power. Don't give up yet. I'm going to show you a way to get around that problem so you can edit all that amazing footage that you captured. Now I use Adobe Premiere Pro, so that's what we're going to be walking through today. But I would be highly surprised if some of the other more popular editing software doesn't have a similar sort of process. But we're working with Premiere Pro today. So let's go over to my laptop and let me show you how to get this done. Okay, so here we are in Premiere Pro. And what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be working with something called proxies. What is a proxy? A proxy is essentially a stand-in file. It's a much smaller file in a lower resolution and smaller file size than the original. So what that's going to allow you to do is to edit your video and play your video smoothly while making edits to the original file. And I'm going to show you this in a moment. Once you go to export, Premiere Pro is going to export the original file. So a really great way of going about getting around not being able to play or edit large files or high resolution files or in this case h.265 video or video recorded with the h265 codec okay so the first thing you're going to need to do is actually create your proxy files there's a couple of ways you can go about doing it uh, now the first way is probably the most efficient um, especially if you have multiple video files which nine times out of ten you will so the first thing you're gonna do go over to your media browser go ahead and browse for the folder and files uh, that you're looking for that you're gonna be working with now if you click on your folder and all of the files don't show up what you need to do is click on this eye looking icon and then make sure file directory is selected. And that should bring up all of the contents of the file. All right, then go ahead and select the all of the files that you're gonna be working with that you want to create proxies for. Then you're gonna click on ingest, then click on the little uh, wrench icon here. Okay, so go over to the ingest settings tab make sure ingest is checked off here and then you're going to make sure create proxies is selected all right then you're going to go into your presets uh, now when i first opened this up the this first selection was um, selected <laughs> gopro cineform so i switched that to the lowest resolution because i'm trying to get the the smoothest video i can get while editing so but you can select any of these uh, 540, 720, or 790. All right. And then uh, you see the rest of how everything is uh, set there. And then click OK. OK, now nothing's going to happen until you drop the files into the timeline. So I'm just going to grab this one here. And drop it onto the timeline just like so. All right, now Media Encoder is going to open the file and start rendering the file. And once it's done, the proxy will be available 
in Premiere Pro. Okay, so there's the file and Media Encoder is starting the rendering process. Okay, so as you can see, it has completed rendering. Uh, it took six minutes, 11 seconds. This was about a two and a half minute uh, video file. Now, once it's done, you don't have to do anything with the file itself. Um, you can just start editing from here. Okay, so let's go in here and I'll show you exactly how to go about getting access to your proxy file now. Okay, so here's the file we just created a proxy for. Now, this is the icon you're gonna need. This is, uh, it says toggle proxies. If you don't have this already in your icon list, click on the plus sign here and go up here and find it. Uh, there it is. And you're just essentially gonna drag it down and then hit okay, all right? And then it'll show up here, okay? So now we're gonna play the original file and then we're gonna play the proxy file. So you'll see there should be a huge difference. All right, so let's go ahead and click play. And as you can see, it's going, but it is very choppy, stuttering along, and it's pretty bad. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop that, okay. And then you can even see as you scrub, it's not responding at all. See that? Okay, and this might be messing up my screen recorder. Okay, now we're gonna play the proxy file. Now keep in mind, I do have my screen recorder going, so that's causing some delays on my PC. Um, it runs a lot smoother when I'm not trying to record the screen and running Adobe Premiere Pro and Media Encoder. Okay, so keep that in mind. So now we have the proxy file selected. You know that it's selected when you see that it's uh, blue, the icon turns blue, and you see the smaller resolution or the smaller size video file. Okay, let's go ahead and click play here. And as you can see, the video is playing smoothly. No hiccups at all. And then we can even go in here and do our scrub as well with no trouble at all. So huge difference between the proxy file and the original file. Now, the other beauty of this is that you can go in and you can make all kinds of color corrections to the proxy file. So you can go in and I'm just kind of messing around here. We'll do something with the highlights and shadows there. And we'll bump up the saturation quite a bit. There we go. So that was just kind of a quick and dirty. But as you can see, the proxy file has taken those corrections. Let's go back to the original file. And there you go. You see that the original file has taken all of those corrections. So once you have the proxy files, you just edit like you normally would. Now the overall downside to using proxies is that it's just gonna it's just gonna take you longer to edit. Just increasing your time because you have to create those proxies and if you have a lot of files, it could take some time. So you just kinda have to build that into your workflow or just get a more powerful PC, <laughs> one or the other. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and wrap the video up here in a few moments, but first I wanna show you the other way you can create your proxy files. So you can go ahead and import your files. You can drag and drop them in. That's usually how I get mine in. Um, but basically the files are already here. And what you're gonna do, you're just gonna click on, I'll click on this one. Click on the file that you want to create a proxy for. Right click, come down to proxy, create proxies. Okay, and this uh, settings box will pop up. You're gonna switch it to the format that you want. I usually just use the H.264. Change your preset. And then you hit okay. Once you hit okay, it's gonna go out to Media Encoder and start that process that you saw before. All right, that's it. It's kind of a challenging video to do simply because all of the programs I was running really put a, a heavy load on my laptop 
And that's the one thing I actually recommend. If you're gonna do this type of editing, it's probably best to do it on a desktop uh, or something that is just really specced out. You really need a PC that can handle the workload. But if you're like me and you have a laptop that's a few years old, or maybe your desktop doesn't have the best specs, the process I showed you might be an option for you. So it doesn't hurt to try. So if you have any recommendations about laptops that are good for editing, uh, good for handling high resolution files, H.265 codec files, put it down in the comments and share that with the rest of us. Or if any of you are PC builders and you can recommend a build for this purpose, put that down in the comment section as well. I certainly would be interested in seeing that. All right, well, once again, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, put that down in the uh, comment section as well. If you're not a subscriber yet, please consider doing so. I do tutorial videos like this. I do all kinds of review videos on drones and gadgets. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you're in the right place. And as always, until we meet again, be good to somebody and be good to yourself. I'll see y'all in the next one. Later.